So I'm sitting here and I'm in quite a bit of pain from attacks on my neck that have been going on for about 18 days now. <clears throat> um, and somebody wanted to ask me about radio frequency tracers and how they can be used. I think they're a really good tool for someone who's dealing with targeting because it provides empirical evidence of what's going on and you can find radio frequencies in your body if you've been implanted, which if you're being targeted with beam weapons you probably have been. Um, I think that implanting is the rule, not the exception. And I think that when you talk about, when you begin to talk about implants, you'll see people really freak out. And I believe that the reason for that is because implants are sort of key to the process. They allow your body to be tracked. They allow your body to be manipulated from the inside. Um, your organs, your brain, your muscles, your nerves. Like it's being done to me right now on the neck. <sighs> um... They can also find bugs in your house. They can find radio frequency devices in your house, um, which could be used for monitoring, uh, listening, cameras, I don't know, so things like that. Um, I think they're also maybe used to control things in your house. So people who are being subjected to this weird kind of mind control torture, um, what I've noticed is they use sound a lot. So I've been in different places where the toilets are controlled, including, I believe, in my own apartment. Um, the toilet is either making a lot of noise or a little bit of noise. Things click. Um, there's weird knocks and noises and buzzes and things like that. And um, these are not just accidental sounds. Uh, I'm sure there's some specific reason why these sounds are being used. Part of it is communication you know, covert types of communication, but part of it is probably just to add to the, the white noise in your brain uh, and can contribute to psychological stress. So um, I was kind of surprised to find radio frequency signals emanating from above my toilet, and then I thought, yeah, well, it seemed like they could control the toilet, so maybe that's how they're doing it with radio frequency devices. Um, so I decided, and I want to say that I first really realized that I was under surveillance in January 2014, and the first thing I wanted to do was to buy a radio frequency tracer and try to find the bugs in the house. I didn't have any clue that there were actually devices in my body at that time. But I knew I was under surveillance. I knew that my webcam had been hacked and my computer, I knew my, my daughter's computer had been hijacked and compromised. Um, and I knew that my laptop had been compromised, so I knew, and I, and I very strongly suspected that there were items that were pointing into my windows from houses that I thought were, and apartments that I thought were abandoned, were actually recording devices, and I still think that today. Um, but, you know, at the very least, I thought, well, I could get a bug detector and find out, maybe I could find a device in my house, and, you know, that would give me empirical evidence that this is going on but nobody wanted to help me do that and I didn't have the money at the time and I didn't really know how to research or understand much about radio frequencies at that time. But I wish I had done that, the first thing, I really do. Um, I did end up getting at that time a cheap bug detector, I mean really cheap, like $35, and it found radio frequencies but it didn't have a directional antenna, I couldn't figure out exactly where they were coming from and um, it didn't have even like, this one has a you know, a dot, I don't know if you can see it. Um, a red dot on the on the sensitivity dial. So now that I've kind of gotten to know the device, I know where I can turn that dot and where it makes sense, you know, where it's a normal, which is about, you know, I know where I can turn the dot and then it's about right for the sensitivity. So if for something happens and I get flooded with radio frequencies as a means of sabotage, because it seems like that does happen, um, the, I'm forced to turn down the sensitivity. So I know, you know, I look at the red dot and say, oh, okay, well, this is, I've had to turn this way down. It's not going to pick up the right radio frequencies because, because I've been flooded with 
you know, I'm assuming they have beam weapons where they can just flood radio frequencies and sabotage your bug detecting efforts. Um, another way this gets sabotaged, well, I don't know if it's sabotage, but another thing that sometimes happens is I'll be going along and I'll be finding these things. Mostly I've been looking at my body because it appears that I've got these things all over my body. I would say that there's probably not, if there's a four inch square on my body that doesn't have some type of radio frequency device, it would be an unusual thing. I mean, most of my body seems to be covered with very, I can't, some of them I can feel, you know, some of them, especially my head, like there's little bits of irritation and itchiness and but most of them I can't even feel unless they've been activated specifically, you know, and I'm supposed to feel them. Um, so sometimes it seems like they can be turned off. And I don't, I'm, I'm guessing they can be turned off from outside sources. Now I think that people like law enforcement, like FBI type level, have bug detectors. I think that they exist that are so... Uh, good that they could actually find radio frequency devices that are turned off. I'm not certain. But with this one, you know, it needs to be emitting between 1 megahertz and 6 gigahertz for it to be detectable. I initially, <clears throat> and I was really glad when Katherine Horton, who's a person who has been making videos, who's really been brutally targeted in Switzerland, Germany, and the United Kingdom uh, demonstrated this device, specifically this device, which I purchased from a German company named called Wimmo, W-I-M-O, um, a Seiko FC6002 MK2 RF tracer. Um, I was glad when she demonstrated that, first of all, showing that she could find chips in her body with it. Um, and again, you can also find devices in your home. Um, because I didn't know before, like, what what frequencies are these broadcasting at? And again, I think somebody who has better radio frequency detecting devices can actually find the exact frequencies. In fact, I know they can. Um, this one just tells you that there's a frequency between 1 megahertz and 6 gigahertz. Um, at one point, I was trying to purchase a similar device from an American company and they didn't have this at the time they had another one that didn't go as low in the frequency range but it went higher and when I looked up information about chips that are used for identifying people I found that they like there was one called I think VeraChip um, they actually broadcast at lower frequencies so it seems like maybe the key thing is to make sure that your, and I don't know this, but I'm just guessing, that your radio frequency tracer picks up low frequencies as well as high frequencies. Um, and I know that a lot of the, or I think, again, I'm not an expert, but from what my reading tells me, a lot of the frequencies that are used in this quote-unquote mind control are actually very low frequencies because that those are the frequencies that your brain actually operates on. But... So who knows what is going on below uh, one megahertz. But in any case, I called an American company and asked for a comparable design device, and they didn't have one. And I couldn't find one that was being distributed in this country, you know, within my price range. And this cost me around $200 with the shipping and everything. Um, And it was funny because I called this company and they advertised customer support um, for the devices that they were selling and everything. And so they couldn't tell me. We They said, well, we can't tell you what a comparable de device is to this. We don't know what this is. And so then I asked about frequencies. And then I asked, well, how many megahertz in a kilohertz? Or how many kilohertz in a megahertz, I asked. And the person on the phone who's selling these radio frequency tracers didn't know how many kilohertz were in a megahertz. So this is the person that's supposed to be giving you technical support. So I lost faith with that company pretty quick. Um, and then I decided to buy this device because it had already been demonstrated that it worked. 
from Germany. And again, with the shipping and everything, it costs just a little over $200. Um, and the funny thing is, I just recently looked at that same company that didn't, wasn't distributing this, that wouldn't, didn't know the difference between a kilohertz and a megahertz. And I see that they are now selling this device, this exact device, distributed from this country, for close to $300, for about $300. So I could buy this from Germany, shipped from Germany, much, much cheaper than this company was selling it in the United States. So 